Hey guys, it's Jenkins211 here, and today we are going to be doing something a little different. We are going to be ranking all the Marvel Cinematic Universe heroes from least powerful to most powerful. Just a quick disclaimer, Loki and Nick Fury will not be on this list. Now, please subscribe to my channel, like this video, and share it with your friends. And without further ado, let's get into it. At number 31, at our bottom spot, is Korg. So Korg, he's not very durable. He's a pile of perishable rock, and he, in Thor Ragnarok, he mentions that rocks fall off of him every day. And in Thor The Dark World, we even see Thor demolish someone of his species. So, the reason why he's so low on the list is just because he's not very durable, and I feel like if he's fought, say, Thanos, Thanos would just smack him once and he'd fall to pieces. But other than that, I love the Korg, he's super funny, and Taika Waititi did a great job with him. So at number 30, we have M'Baku. First appearing in the Black Panther movie, he was a human who fought T'Challa, almost beat him in ritualistic combat. He seems very strong. He picked up that one guy in the Black Panther movie, and he fought against the Outriders easily in Infinity War. But it ends there. I feel like he would win against Korg in a fight simply because he would smack him with his staff and Korg would break apart. But other than that, I don't think he could beat anyone else on this list. So at the number 29 spot, we have Mantis. Now Mantis is a pretty cool character. She has the ability to put anyone to sleep. However, she has to touch their skin. So she put the likes of Ego to sleep, Thanos, and Drax with varying levels of success. But I feel like this is where she would rest if it was just, can she beat anyone else just in a fight towards the next end of this list if they were trying? And I'd say number 29 is where she should rest. At number 28, we have Shuri. Now, Shuri, the sister of T'Challa, the most brilliant mind, well, that's debatable, currently in the Marvel Universe, is low on this list because I feel like she gives all the good stuff to Okoye and T'Challa. Um, she gets these gauntlet things that on her wrists in the shape of, like, panther mouths, and they fire sonic blasts, but the only two times she used them were on Corvus Glaive and Killmonger, and both of those people wrecked her. So, uh, we have yet to see her do anything truly proving. So, at number 27 is Rocket Raccoon. Now, Rocket Raccoon isn't a bad character. I like him a lot. He's got a lot of personality. However, he doesn't have as many great feats of strength compared to other people down on this list. His one feat of strength is trapping half the Ravengers and messing with them all night, and he killed a lot of them, okay? However, he did that with hours of prep time. If Tony Stark had hours of prep time to beat Thanos, he probably would have. He didn't in this movie, but just imagine if he had a, a legion of his nanotech suits all beating down Thanos. I don't think Thanos would have won, and some might say Thanos was holding back on Titan. Let's say he wasn't, he would have lost. So, that's why I just feel like any of his great feats involve a lot of prep time. So, that's why I placed him so low on this list. Number 26 is Hawkeye. Now, I actually really like Hawkeye. Jeremy Renner plays him really well. And they gave Hawkeye a family. I actually like that. I think I'm in the minority on that. But Hawkeye showed great feats of strength in the Battle of New York. Less great feats in Age of Ultron. Um, he was kind of wimpy in Civil War, in my opinion. They played him down, but I think the having all sorts of arrows is a really cool ability that he has, and just this infinite accuracy, and he can't miss. And I think he's a really cool character, um, but he's not very good at hand-to-hand -hand combat, which is what a character like him should be good at. But, like, he got beat by Black Widow, and I just think that they should expand and make him better in the future. But as for now, he rests comfortably right here. So bringing up the end of our first tier was Hawkeye. Now bringing up this new tier, they're more powerful than the last one, and they're martial artists. So our first martial artist, number 25, is Nebula. Now her cybernetic enhancements do give her a boost. That's why she's not in the last tier. She's very skilled, very powerful, but she's weaker than the rest of these martial artists. She is always getting beaten, and the only time that she didn't lose to Gamora was when Gamora tried to help her and she betrayed her. So, I could see her doing damage against someone like Thanos, definitely more than those to come, but Nebula, you're, you're 
low on the list for me. You're number 25. Number 24 is Okoye, the bodyguard of the Black Panther, the protector of the throne. And the one that'll probably bring me the most hate on this list. Now, some of you believe that Okoye, she should be up there next to T'Challa himself. I disagree. Um, if you look at her actual feats of strength and not her implied feats, she's really just used a vibranium spear to hit people. And that's, that's pretty much it. So she, she earns her rank right here at number 24. At number 23, we have a blank screen? Hmm. I don't know. This was supposed to be Drax, but it, it says Drax, but it's just a white picture. Maybe I'll fix that in post-production, but now nah, I'm, I'm lazy. I probably won't. But, okay, so Drax. He's the destroyer. He's pretty strong. He kicked Thanos in the leg, and Thanos fell, sort of, when they were trying to pull the gauntlet off. He's kind of dumb, but I think he deserves this spot on this list. So, at uh, number 23, we have Drax. At number 22, we have Black Widow or Natasha Romanoff. It started off in the MCU and Iron Man 2. She was the peak of martial arts at its best. She was taking out all those dudes in that one scene. Happy Hogan takes out one guy. She took out, like, 30. She was the most powerful martial artist. If you weren't prepared, she would take you out. And then came Bucky. And then came Gamora. And then came, like, so she's slowly been displaced, but her raw strength alone and her gadgets she's gotten over the year puts her at the number 22 spot. Number 21 on this list is the one, the only, Winter Soldier Bucky Barnes. With a metal arm and uh, tons of plans, especially when he's being controlled. I found him to be much weaker when he's acting on his own free will. When he's controlled... Oh, he could contest with our my number 20 on this list. They were the hardest to place. They were almost interchangeable with each other. And I think you'll understand when you see who number 20 is in a second. But number 21 has to go to Bucky Barnes. Ending up as the best martial artist on this list at the end of this tier, number 20 is the adoptive daughter of Thanos, his favorite child, Gamora. Gamora is powerful, but I just couldn't decide whether her or Bucky would win in a fight. And I went to Amino, and I made the poll. You guys responded, and Gamora earned her place on this list. So at number 20, ending our martial artist tier, is Gamora. At number 19, we have Kraglin. Kraglin took possession of Yondu's arrow at the end of Guardians of the Galaxy 2, but he is not as skilled at Yondu as using it. So although the Yaka arrow is a very, very deadly weapon, under his care, it will not be as deadly as when Yondu uses it, so he earns his spot right here at number 19. Number 18 on this list is Yondu. We saw the full extent of his powers at Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 in that 1-6 scene. However, I feel like that was one time, and that was the height of his power, and it's not going to get any better than that. In fact, I thought it would get worse, and he ended up dying, so he can't see his powers expanded upon. So, his implied power is very high, and that's why he sits here comfortably at number 18. Number 17 on this list is Wong. Wong may be a magician, just like the Sorcerer Supreme. However, I do not believe he is nearly as powerful, simply because Doctor Strange defended the, uh, one of the, the New York Sanctum from Kaecilius' goons. While Wong, using magical artifacts that he actually knew what they did, being experienced, and with a whole bunch of other magicians, couldn't stop them. He got demolished. But Doctor Strange, by himself, being a new sorcerer himself, was able to. So Wong's implied power being a sorcerer only goes so far. I know he's powerful. I know he cut off the hand of Supergiant. But it just, I feel like he earns the spot at 17 on this list. At number 16, we have Hope Van Dyne's Wasp. Now, if you haven't seen Ant-Man and the Wasp, spoilers right here. Um, you can skip ahead 20 seconds into the video and there will be no more spoilers. But in this, we see that she has blasters, she can fly, and she can shrink just the same as Ant-Man. With these powers, she is stronger than Ant-Man was in his first film. And that gives her the right to sit here at number 16. Starting with Star-Lord at number 15, we are now getting into our more powerful characters, in my personal opinion. 
Now, the way I branched this out was after the martial artists ending with Gamora, we had Wong, Yondu, Kraglin, and we had the Wasp. These characters are in between. They're not the weaker humans, but they're not the full-fledged powerhouses, okay? But on the weaker end of our powerhouse tier, we have Star-Lord at number 15. He earned this place because of his fight against the Avengers. He Drax was almost taken out immediately. Mantis was almost completely taken out. And he took down Spider-Man. He almost he busied Doctor Strange. He kept Doctor Strange busy. And he dealt with Iron Man. All at the same time because he was fueled by his love for Gamora. But just show that that be his feat of strength that we're ranking him as. That's a pretty powerful foe. Nah, I'm just going to admit it right there. Star-Lord earns his place at number 15. At number 14, we have Quicksilver. Many forget about Quicksilver, but he was extremely powerful in Age of Ultron, the movie he debuted and died in. He was able to quickly take apart many robots, and he was beaten by the Avengers like Cap and Thor. However, he held his own against Hawkeye, knocked him over, knocked Cap over a couple times. He was very powerful. And I think this is where he should rest at this point on the list. I feel like speed can only take you so far, especially when he's only running at around Mach 2, Mach 3, according to some math calculations by Gubbs. Go check him out. Gubbs is wonderful. But I just feel like going that fast, it'll also hurt if you hit something. So if Cap swung his shield and he's moving that fast, hitting it at that impact would just flatten Quicksilver. So that's why he's right here on my list. At number 13, I place Groot. Now, Groot is a very powerful character. He is essentially immortal. He can stab his plant leaves, I mean, thorns, bristles, whatever you want to call them, through dozens of enemies and slam them around effortlessly, showing that he has super strength. He can regenerate his immortality thing. And he can mold his body. His body is also immune to gunfire. He's made shields out of his twigs that have blocked machine gun bullets. And that's why he earns his place rightfully at number 13. At number 12, we have one of my favorite characters in Rhodey's War Machine. And if you've noticed, he's gradually got more and more powerful throughout the films. To an Infinity War, he dropped a payload on a group of outriders in that final Wakanda scene. And it looked like he had set off some sort of mini nuke. Like, it was, it was crazy. And so, one thing I see is I say, could Groot pierce the armor? Probably. Could he reach him if, uh, if he flew to max height? No. He can beat Groot, so he deserves his place here. So, at number 12, I have one of the standouts of Infinity War, War Machine. At number 11, we have the Black Panther. T'Challa has a variety of powers. All the technology from Shuri made perfect by T'Challa's martial arts skill. And he also has super strength from the heart-shaped herb. It's just everything culminating together, creating a really solid hero in the Black Panther. Which is why he earns his spot at number 11. Number 10 is Ant-Man. Ant-Man proved himself to be very powerful in Civil War and Ant-Man and the Wasp. So skip ahead 30 seconds if you want to avoid spoilers for Ant-Man and the Wasp. Now, in Civil War, he is able to fight against Black Panther, Iron Man, War Machine, and Spider-Man all at the same time in his giant man form. That is taken to the extreme in Ant-Man and the Wasp, as he grows to an absolutely enormous size. This allows him to stop an entire freighter by himself. No help from the Wasp. And this just proves why Ant-Man is one of the strongest Avengers and why he earns his right at number 10. At number 9, we have Spider-Man. Spider-Man in Infinity War was stronger than he's ever been. He was wearing the Iron Spider suit, and he was able to take big punches from Thanos and deal some big punches back. He almost pulled off the Infinity Gauntlet. He was just very powerful in this movie. It gained him more of a cult following than he already had, and we can't wait to see more of him in Spider-Man Far From Home. So that is why Spider-Man is number 9. Number 8 on my list is Valkyrie, Thor's kind of girlfriend from Thor Ragnarok, and she was very powerful in that film. She had that Asgardian strength and durability. She was almost as strong as Thor, and her biggest feat was actually in the alien escape scene. 
she moves a giant alien gun to fire on other ships. And that, to me, is comparable to Captain America pulling in that giant helicopter, and that's why she's so high on this list and she ranked number 8. Finally, we see the first Avenger on this list at number 7. Captain America. Who could be better than that? He's the patriot who fights for his country. Well, not anymore. But he has his iconic shield. Well, well, not anymore. But he's still got them muscles. So, and he's still very lucky. No one's taking down Captain America. And if they do, fans will cry out hypocrisy and, and boycott Marvel. He's got that luck factor. And the whole writers love him on his side. And that's why Captain America is so powerful. And the feat I'm quoting from this is that helicopter scene. It just looked like he was a bit stronger than Valkyrie, in my opinion. And he's got that Captain America luck and that quote that makes him never lose. I could do this all day. So those are the reasons why Cap comes in at number seven. At number six, starting off our god tier. These are the most powerful superheroes. At number six, starting off, we have the Hulk. The Hulk is extremely powerful. He was showcased to be a bit weak in Infinity War, but I'm taking everyone's strongest, strongest feats. His strongest feat was in the... He stopped the whole Chitauri warship in the Avengers, and I think that just proves that he is the strongest that there is. So that's why Hulk rests at number six. At number five, I place Vision. Vision is here, this high on the list, not because of his Infinity War performance, but because of how he was in Civil War and in Age of Ultron. In those two movies, Vision was a powerhouse. He was so much like the comics, he phased, he shot lasers out of that crystal on his forehead, which is now the Mind Stone in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, but it was amazing. And then Infinity War came, and he was a damsel in distress, and he was weak. So I'm taking those two versions, seeing that he was stabbed by some sort of crazy lance meant to counteract his powers. If he didn't have that, Vision would have been powerful again in Infinity War. So this is why he lands at number five. Coming in at number four is Iron Man. Iron Man proved himself to be one of the strongest Avengers in Avengers Infinity War. The new bleeding edge armor suit powered by nanobots was essentially like Green Lantern's ring. It was anything Tony Stark's mind wanted it to be. So he could transform into more powerful, like, laser beams. He made a giant sword out of his arm. Like, he, it was really overpowered. And it proved that he was, in fact, stronger than Vision and the Hulk. He pushed Thanos around and it gave him a good run for his money in his 1v1 that he had. Although he did lose, it was a very cool, cool fight. And it was the reason why Iron Man is sitting here at number 4. These top 3 characters were very hard to place. They are all very powerful and they are all very close in power levels. However, the weakest of the big 3 is Scarlet Witch. Scarlet Witch comes in at number three. Her powers are very strong. She has very, very differing powers. However, she gave Thanos a run for his money when she fired a laser beam at him, and he could barely face it even with five Infinity Stones. And she was able to crack the Mind Stone, and she almost stopped Thanos if Thanos had not gotten the Time Stone from Doctor Strange earlier. This, it, 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 she was very strong in Infinity War, stronger than she's ever been. But she still comes in at number three. Coming in at number two is the one and only Sorcerer Supreme, Doctor Strange. Doctor Strange in Infinity War had grown so much that it dwarfed his Thor Ragnarok power levels to the point where Thanos created a black hole and Doctor Strange was able to convert it into simple butterflies. Just, these were parlor tricks for him and he was able to clone himself and he pushed Thanos into the mirror dimension, just showing immense levels of power which had not been seen before. And just Doctor Strange really proved himself to be one of the most powerful creatures in the multiverse in this movie. And the most powerful Marvel Cinematic Universe hero for the money as of right now, August 2018, is Thor. Thor crafted Stormbreaker, which allowed him access to not only more power than he had ever had before, but the ability to open the Bifrost at will. This means that he can use it as a dangerous weapon, just like Loki did in the original Thor movie, and that is insane. He could have 
um, seriously hurt Thanos, not by driving Stormbreaker into his chest, which, by the way, held the power of the Power Stone, just a straight blunt blast, and was able to cut through Thanos with all six Infinity Stones. He could have opened the Bifrost and hit him with a full blast of magical energy. And it's just ridiculous how powerful that Thor has gotten at this point. And I'm just wondering what he is going to do next. He lost everything and it has gained so much power. And I'm so excited to see Avengers 4 and how Thor's journey will progress in that film. And that pretty much wraps up my list. Please leave your opinions in the comment section down below. Do you agree with me? Do you disagree? Do you think someone could have beaten Thor? Just let me know in the comment section down below. And if you want to play, see me play a video game, just comment what video game you want to see me play, and I will get right onto that. Make sure to share this video with your friends, and like it, this video, and subscribe to my channel. And remember, my channel icon is right there in the center of your screen. Another video by me is to the left, and to the right is Creepa MC. He makes wonderful videos, different gaming videos, every week. And Akidasta, he makes meme compilations and anime openings as well, and you can check him out to the right. Thanks for watching, and goodbye.